Hello again. This one's gonna be a good bit different from my last two videos. It's gonna have a lot less music and a lot more talking because I kind of wanted to get more in depth with the world that I made. I'm just giving you that quick heads up. Linked in the description of this video is some scans of this entire sketchbook on my art station that you can check out if you want to see everything in the highest possible quality that you can. And yeah, I hope that you like what you see here today. Thanks for checking it out. The next video will cover my fully rendered book that I made for senior thesis, and I'm very excited to share that with you. Also, I'm using my camera's microphone for this video, so I apologize if the audio quality is not up to snuff with my last two videos. This is a guarl. They're like the squirrels of the world. I think they're super cute. They're, they're just little squirrels with beaks and grippy tails. I, I really like them. This is a bit of a scene I made, just kind of trying to think about how some of the alleyways might look. You got someone up here um, taking their hat off with a guarl and they're watching this guard kind of patrol. He has his mound mutt with him, which is the big dog right here. And they're pretty cool. I actually did a painting of them, which I'll show on screen, which never made it into my thesis. I also did a painting of this guard, but he also didn't make it to my thesis because I wasn't really <laughs> I wasn't fully set on his design just yet, but I do think he has a lot of interesting things going for him. This is just um, one of the corner shops. It's like a bar. There's a construction worker here who I like to think recently got off his shift, picked up an energy elixir and a burger, and he has his little Chobot, which is a robot shaped like a chode and they produce this like sticky substance from the top which they can use to help build things in Auric or Dahlia. I know it's disgusting but um you know I got some plates here some pans and then there's like this robot bartender who's who's just a brain because a huge thing about the theme of the world is that you are your work you know you don't really have time to be a person if you want to make a livable wage. Foods drink let me just get another shot of this page here by the way the reason this whole thing is like held together by a bunch of tape and other nonsense was um it was a sketchbook gallery so i had to put everything kind of together in a concise way and um here is a shot of what it would look like to be in a production line in the third circle factory um you have a morta asset here kind of squeezing this meat machine to, to put some processed meat into these bins which are then later moved on the rotary belt to packing. You can see another Morta asset back here handing some packages off to a Pinook drone right there and then there's a mutilated Morta asset in his hovering terminal and <laughs> they analyze work speeds and, and things like that. And then on this page, this is how Morta assets are born. They kind of fall out of this giant like spire in a lake and they hatch from these eggs um, onto the, the cold world, <laughs> you know? This here is a mind flayer or a moon and they essentially rewire a Morta asset's behavior and brain if they're acting up and not really accomplishing their tasks in the way that they're supposed to. <clears throat> oh yeah, here's a shiv and these actually made it pretty far um, throughout my world building. These are basically the biomechanical punishers of Morta assets. They help maintain production by using their demeaning presence <laughs> and uh they're not afraid to get down and dirty to get the work done they will hurt people i, I really quite like their design I, I think it's pretty cool honestly they got this like vintage kind of 80s sci-fi rifle type of deal they got this disgusting <laughs> chest area they kind of almost have these like dreadlocks, which act almost like tasers. Right here, you'll kind of see later on, they, they can attach an umbilical cord 
to Morta assets to, to lead them on. And, you know, they, they are essentially just bird people. So, uh, it's confirmed I am a furry artist. And right here is a ground terminal. You saw the hovering terminal for mutilated Morta assets on the other page. This is what the terminals are like when they are not allowed free movement and their faces are just plugged right on in into the console and here they can uh, control vehicles around the factory and monitor through cameras and on this next page you can see a shiv using a mind flayer to flay the mind of a mutilated morta asset and this is kind of what that process would look like just a lot of mess and shapes and it feels so intrusive because it is, you know, they're taking their minds. This is probably one of my favorite sketches I've ever really done. I just, I love this page. I think there's so much movement and uh, it's just such a good representation of how brutal this world is. What do we got on the other side here? Here is a Dahlia branded firearm. This is a sniper rifle right here. Um, I'm kind of toying with the ideas of firearms in my world. I think I like more of a vintage feeling type of deal rather than this more modern militaristic utilitarian vibe I had going on. This was one of my, like, I don't want to say early because obviously it's not an early design, but this is where I started kind of trying to fuse the organic mechanical with these more like, with these more like European gothic type of vibes and all this analog technology. It, it certainly is a really great aesthetic, in my opinion, because it's so intrinsically me, but I'll be honest, man, this is a hard architectural style to pull off and make it look like, oh yeah, that's somewhere, that's like a house, you know? And you'll see in my fully rendered images, I tended to stay away from things this decorative, but moving forward, I'm going to be bringing it back in full fucking swing, because I just love it so much. Here's a little front view for what a hotel could look like um, if you were just kind of passing it by on the street. Here's just some thumbnails for a piece that I that I made, which also never really made it into the thesis, but you know, it was neat. So these guys here are called hereticals. They essentially turn their bodies into these weapons, um, both as a way to defend themselves and also retaliate against the ideals of the Order of the Fane. This guy here is a medical brute, and you know, they're kind of like, I don't want to say a, a typical brute class figure, because they have these guns filled with like, methamphetamines and opiates and other shit uh, to like, numb pain, but still get you amped up. These guys use like toxic fumes and their wires are sourced to the toxic Bertha and they uh, create the poison gas in their like breasts and distribute them through these arm wires into the backpack of these toxic boys who then shoot it out with their fingers. Here's a bit of a closer look at his, like, syringe arm. This thing manufactures syringes for his medical gun as he, uh, is in combat. This is just a couple of, like, architectural call-out ideas I had. Always trying to find balance between interesting design and having too much detail, which is something I struggle with a lot. And then there are these kind of power outlets, so you can see the wire coming out of the mouth, and it's pretty much just a, a calcified corpse. This here is an alternate design for the medical brute from the Hereticals faction. He's pretty cool. Um, kind of lacks some of his more signature details that he has in the other sketch, but, you know, overall, I, I, st I still like that design a lot too. And then here's a couple of Heretical Panooks, and these are just Panook that were decommissioned and no longer used in a production setting, kind of taken from a scrapyard and modified to fit the needs of the hereticals. Yeah, this whole thing is like held together by sticky putty. All right, so right here, we got some of the, some of these early designs for the uh, first circle and kind of more religious architecture. I got like some temple designs here, um, pretty rough sketches. 
I, I think this one's pretty neat though, right here. Um, this is more representational of how I would imagine the buildings to look. Flip that one up, and we got some more architectural design for the second circle. This one's pretty wild. The, the, you can see what I'm talking about when I say I have some issues balancing detail. But with that being said, I still think there's some great stuff going on here. Here are some more building designs that I was working on. And then I imagine some of the lower income areas of the second circle are just incredibly organic in comparison to the more analog technology based houses in like middle class or, or what have you. So there's a lot of just veinous looking structures and it's very gothic. For example, this is a window. Moving on to the next page, I got Sonic with a shotgun with a bullet bill behind him. That's one thing about me that you might not have guessed, but dude, fucking Sonic is the shit. Sonic Heroes when I was a kid, that game was amazing. That got me through my parents' divorce. Let's be so fucking real. Here's a couple <laughs> here's a couple of um just like like very very small building sketches this is my fingernail this here is another factory panook this is basically the decomposing class of panook in the factory um that you know go back and scrape up and collect bodies uh this is kind of an interesting one because they don't necessarily need to be in the world so i'm actually thinking of repurposing this into another type of uh heretical panook and it's kind of gross, you can see like a person in there, just kneeled, hunched over, and it's holding that nasty little mouth. Back before I had the memory purse concept completely solidified, I actually had the idea of these kind of like mouths, um, and it was like almost more of a detention center than a rebirth center, and you can see there's a Morta Asset just kind of stuck in there. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy I kind of switched it to the newer idea I had. This is the tagline um, for pretty much the entire third circle. There is glory in silence in terms of saying, you know, shut up, do your work. And it goes further once you realize that Morta assets are not even capable of speech. They lack mouths. We'll get more into that later. Yeah, 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 so here's my main, uh, kind of heretical panook right here, and I love this design, honestly, it's so just iconic and fun for me, I love the buzzsaw, it's just over the fucking top sci-fi, dude, but I did another painting of this one as well, which I'll throw on the screen, because that, as well as some other pieces, did not make it into my final thesis book. However, what a what a cool dude. I mean, he's just so nasty. I love him. He's like an anglerfish. Not really, but kind of. Over and this is kind of um what I imagine the staircases to look like in my world. Um this shit it was a pain in the ass to paint. I'm going to bring it back once I make Design Works Volume 2 cuz I mean, there's just something so interesting about this design for something as simple as a staircase, but Definitely had to cut that um, to save time while I was just working on thesis because we don't get a lot of time for that stuff. Here's a sketch of what the memory purse kind of looks like when it's just detached and floating. Now, pre development um, of my thesis, I actually kind of imagined the hereticals would look a bit more like this, uh, where they have garb of the fins, kind of, you know, signature to the order of the fane and they would wear them in kind of direct contrast to the guards. And then they would have these robots here, which would kind of back them up. But I found the idea of them mutilating themselves and using discarded Panook back against their oppressors was just a much better thematic choice. And, and also aesthetically, I think it fits the world better. That being said, I, I do quite like the way this page looks. Oh boy, yeah, this one. 
So this whole page is kind of just what I imagined the second circle to look like um, in a couple of different areas. And for the most part, this is this is there, like this is on point. see a, a lot of the more European Gothic like design choices in, in this page in particular um, and I, I really love those little details man I think they're so fun I really like that the ensign has this weird moon and kind of a skull face in it it's just so interesting I I really really do just love this page here I was kind of playing around with the idea of what the corporate blasters would look like, or the Order of the Fanes blasters, and I kind of settled on this weird, uh, kind of Geigery looking pistol. And then this is the Dahlia pistol right here. And again, I'm kind of playing around with firearm ideas a bit more lately, so these, these could change a lot in the next couple of months, but who's to say? And then this whole page right here, this was kind of the thumbnails that started it out, which is right there, and you can see, you know, the end here, kind of the crossroads, and then all of that. There's some, like, lunch left over from someone who was, uh, just kind of hanging around downtown, which I like. I also had this little heretical dagger, but I thought it looked too fucking goofy. I actually straight up forgot what the, the next page was. Oh! Son! Here was kind of some, like, conceptualization for, like, the vertical structure of the world, you know? Just trying to think of how architectural pieces would all fit together. I went back and redid that concept quite a bit, because this just didn't feel right. But it does have this interesting, like, infinite back alley feel, which I do quite enjoy. And then here's just another building sketch right there. Some designs for just like the really gothic windows. You'll see when I show you my thesis that sadly a lot of these more intricate designs in my world were, were kind of, I was kind of told not to use them in effort to, to save time and also to appeal, you know, artistically to the masses, which I think is annoying. I think we should really allow artists to go balls to the wall. Here are some augmented body forms of a man and a woman. And I was going to do an androgynous body form as well, because I, I do find inclusivity quite important when it comes to world building. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't do it. So my bad. Non-binary kings, queens, non-binary it things. Uh, I apologize, but for now, this is what we're working with. This is just kind of a concept of what maybe a sewer system could look like from the outside and just some guy like hunched over in the sewer polaroid of me working on the sketchbook and uh watching some youtube and polaroid of the woods i believe this is a photo taken way back when i lived in michigan and then if you go over here to this tab that says release me paul it kind of brings out this entire kind of nutsoid page and this is another segment of that lower class area I was talking about that's just super organic. You got a little guarl here, you got someone smoking a cigarette next to their window and an industrial light. You got kind of this weirder second circle designed panook. Someone on top of their kari, which is kind of like a dinosaur. I'm not going to get into the connection with the dinosaurs yet. That's like a later discussion. Um, there are dinosaurs, and just a lot of fun stuff happening 
on this little fold-out page here. So this thing right here is called a Batarellus Machus, and they act kind of like guards for uh, corporate entities venturing towards like different areas, you know, and they, they're disturbing. I will show you one of the other. I'll show you, fuck it, I'll show you the thesis image of him. And these are kind of like archaic tech guards that were used by people in the Nola district. And they're not really, you don't see them walking around anymore. I just was kind of obsessed with their design for a bit. Um, I did give them more of a more infanty face recently because I felt that it was kind of unsettling to look at. And I can show you that as well. That one's a bit older. And this is a heretical, I want to say pilot, but not necessarily a pilot, but they, uh, they, they, they control Panu. They have these wires going through their guts and just this really sad, limp posture to them. Here was kind of another idea for the, um, Batarellus Machus, but I kind of felt that he looked too, uh, mortal. Here was a, a really... Another just rough concept for the vertical structure. I got kind of like these furnaces peeking up from the third circle, going through the second circle into another layer of the second circle, and then a bridge kind of built around it. You can see people walking around. Um, some buildings down here are acting almost like structural support for the bridge itself. Um, and then you got this Panook right here, and it was just a sketch. I also had this idea for how cranes might look in my world and I like to think of them as almost like these hives with like independently operating arms uh, as they move shit around. Over here on the next page, these are a few of the deities in my world. I believe that this one here is Vietamu and this one here is Azuli. And I'm not really gonna get into the whole lore behind the Fane Ruka and his children but um, I will show you the designs. They also have a third sister named Zinju, who's the goddess of strings, and three brothers like uh, Rethrot, Ram, and then Prophet. We got a uh, augmented civilian who had, you know, I said earlier that whole narrative of you are your work. So here is someone that was a blacksmith and essentially turned his body into blacksmith tools in order to be better at his craft. You can see he's got a hammer, he's got sword pliers, and he's got like a, a fan. And his chest and stomach are reminiscent of furnaces. And in between all of them is a rough sigil of servitude. If you are part of a trade, you likely have to become that trade in order to make any type of wage. And right here is a concept for a mech, and uh, this thing is just straight up Geiger. Let's be so real right now. Maybe the size of a pilot. I imagine this hatch here just opens up, and you crawl inside, and it's almost like a mech just full of people working inside of it. Now what this mech would do, I'm not actually too sure, but I thought it was fucking cool and I put it in the book. This is a industrial arm in the factory. You know, there's tons of industrial machines, so I felt, hey, uh, let me make one of those. It's obviously more like a human arm in some areas, but then jointed almost similar to some kind of distorted arachnid. When you zoom in on the industrial machine, it, it's, it's basically fingers fitted with different types of, uh, instruments of creation or separation. Here was a bit of a concept of how I'd want the uh, factory walkways to look like. I imagine that there's these fountains uh, full of just caustic fluid for production, the tunnel, and then it goes up into this kind of uh, almost cathedral-like ceiling. And here was like the main sketch I based the mutilated Morta assets off. I, I really just wanted this sad, duck-footed, bloated corpse thing that you almost pity, but you also just kind of hate because they're so weak of will. And they're so observant. They also had, like, truck lights <laughs> on them for fucking whatever reason when I first designed them. And moving on over to the next page, we got some more, uh, factory work, you know. This is what I imagine that Morta assets who are infused with the Mind Flayer would look like. 
you see they're kind of turning into uh, just almost an entirely different being. This one here has just been re reassigned to um, cargo movement. He's moving with a Panook, so the Panook is also taking some crates. I really like this drawing. There's something about it for me. I also just love the Panook. They're so they're my favorite part of the world in terms of design. I think they're so weird and they're almost kind of cute. <laughs> like it's so strange. I don't know. And here is Moru when I was kind of working on his initial design. And there he is, that little fucker, Malib. I love him so much. He is my favorite thing in the entire world. Moru changed a lot while I was trying to adjust him into the more modern retelling of my story. Here's one of the designs for what the rotary belts in the factory could look like from a side view. Packages would kind of be going across like that. Got all these gears and stuff. I'll, I'll show you a painting of this one too. Ribbon for the gallery. Sketches from the world of Oricredalia. I really have a way with words. This is another sketch for that heretical piece when I was thinking about what I wanted to be in the actual scene. And then below that, I kind of had like my final value ideation for the piece. This is how I would imagine the vending machines to look in my world. They're almost kind of like jukeboxes. Um, I really, really like their design, honestly. I think it's just strange and fun. And th this sketch is probably almost two years old now. This was kind of how I imagined uh, the inside of a bar to be like in the world you got like potions and people sitting at tables just lots of weird architecture you got a tooth door um you got a little kari right there sleeping this would be the bartender kind of just attached to this vent in his bar just kind of working i find that it has something about it though that i just really like And then this is the sketch that I actually went with for that assignment. My art style, it was so drastically different before I went back and relearned fundamentals. I do think this is a pretty fun piece. I'll throw up the painted version. I'm not super proud of it, but I do think it's also kind of, kind of fucking cool. Next to this is some more religious architecture from the first circle. So I'll kind of slowly pan up on that. I really like this design in particular. And here is the original cover to my book, uh, right here. And it was like an artistic representation of a Morta asset inside of its memory purse. And I did a couple of different paintings for this one, but I, I wasn't happy with any of them. So I went with something significantly more simple. I do think I should come back to this one at some point though and touch it up. Yeah, so here is the decomposition process. You can see a Panook here. He's at his station and he's melting a corpse back down into genetic fluid so that the corpse can be reborn in a memory purse and work again. Next to that, I got a sketch of a door in the second circle. And I got the terminal cluster, which is a bunch of ground terminals kind of all turned into one giant structure for uh, work to get done. I got a rotary belt there in the background, so you can kind of imagine how those would be structured in columns as you walk through the halls of the third circle factory. And then this was another sketch when I was trying to think about how I'm going to implement this more gothic design triangles that's really the way to go i feel here's kind of how i would imagine the order of the thane's armor looked way back in the day before anything in the story even takes place which is very spiky very very european i mean significantly more so than the world is currently and i just want to i just for some reason i just want to draw this guy with a machine gun and then here was the heavy knight design for the order of the thane right there and i kind of gave him two separate helmet variations and then i also have the standard order of the thane knight right here now i've recently gone back and kind of touched up these designs because i i don't know i just something wasn't hitting so i'll show you that here in a second this is their mound mutt design um and i just i love the way these guys look too there's something about them
Here's that newer design, though, that I was mentioning. Um, I'm just trying to think a little more practically about their armor, and I really wanted to bring back that fin aesthetic, but this one's probably not final. I do quite like the other one a lot, and then you kind of got a sword right here. This is basically a bounty hunter syndicate, and similar to the hereticals, they modify and augment their body to become better at their offensive capabilities. However, unlike the hereticals, they're in it specifically for monetary gain. I also have a piece um, right here that was turned into a final painting that I'll show, because that one also did not make it into my thesis. Here's kind of a gun idea. Here's another idea of what they could look like. This one's a bit more hulking. I really love the idea of them having these almost glowing like petally oh, i don't know what they're called those things around your neck the fancy people used to wear but something kind of like that <laughs> this guy's just kind of goofy i'm he's he was just fun he's like a mushroom guy some drawings of how i you know i just wanted to define what the morta assets hands and face would look like a bit more i wanted them to just look so tired and I wanted you to almost not even view them as a sentient thing. You know, they're encased in this, this carapace and unable to speak. And their hands here are fused together in the event that they uh, can't operate firearms. And then here was the drawing that I ended up using for the painting later on in my thesis book. And this is another man and another woman of the Morta Asset body type. And then, of course, the, uh, the mutilated Morta asset, more fully uh, thought out in this drawing. And you can really see a lot more bloated corpse inspiration I was talking about. This is the drawing of a knightly vest with a mound mutt right here. Um, man, I actually, I think this is a pretty kick-ass drawing. I just love how decorative their their bio their bio implants really are like it's so and then of course the mound mutt you know like if it bit your arm like that arm's just fucked what's uh what is after this page the drawings of some chests that you would find in the world while exploring um you got small chests small chests big chests small chests and then this is their crit cartridge. This is actually how they pay for everything. Higher class civilians have these installed in their chest. When I was designing this, I was really just thinking about my time as a kid playing on Sega Genesis, and I just loved the way that the uh, cartridges <laughs> operated so much. So I was like, hey, what if they were credit cards? This is some uh, pretty rough civilian sketches. I want to go back in and kind of make them more... Uh, you know, I think they're interesting. I just think that they could be more interesting. But they, they have these, like, mushroom hats, which I, I think is quite charming. The anatomical structure of people in this world. And this is just a drawing of what a gate to the first circle would look like. And you can see a lot of imagery of the Fane and one of his goddess children. And you can see a... Really loose, loose, loose interpretation of a guy riding his Kari through the, uh, through the gateway there. Here's a more realistic looking drawing of how I would imagine the Guarls to look. Um, they're, they're, they kind of transitioned over the couple of months that I was working on my thesis into being, uh, almost more like flying squirrels with these grippy tails, and I just, I love them still. But this, uh, creature was turned into the mascot of one of the, the major corporations in the world right here. And his name is Mucus, Mucus the mascot. He's the mascot for Clericos, which is essentially the Walmart of Oracredalia. You know, he's kind of funny. He always has like a little tissue box with him because he's called Mucus because he's green and he has a snotty little nose. But this is just kind of an imagining of um, a new way I could make the Orblich look an older idea for the guards in the world. I like the idea of having them, this giant tapeworm in their throat, kind of take them over, but I thought the idea of people actively supporting the corporations was a lot scarier. 
Here's just kind of a rough sketch of um, the third circle factory. Oh, a ruined part next to some boilers. My camera is about to die. Let's uh, knock out this last page then. Here's just a bunch of like Panook concept work and stuff, and this is my favorite Panook drawing I've ever done. And I just I think he's awesome. Notes for world shit, and then some reworkings of of Moru. You know when I was starting to come up with more about his character. I'm sorry, my camera's so close to dying. I just want to get this done, <laughs> but that's fun and. Another, here's another nightly vast, another mech kind of design, and he's really cool. He's also very intricately detailed. I drew him while I was waiting for my Fiat to get fixed. A power structure, it provides power to buildings. I can get more into that when I show you my actual thesis. Uh, and with that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to check out my sketchbook, and I'm throwing my socials on the screen if you guys want to follow me there at all. I, I'm trying to get more stuff done next week i'm gonna have a walkthrough of my thesis and also probably this um kind of weird little fake video game dlc i've been <laughs> i've been making hey thanks for checking me out i do want to offer a reminder that this sketchbook is available on my art station with high quality scans and you are invited to look at it goodbye